be known, sons and daughters, that Satan was an architect. Drink from his cup. Pledge yourselves. And together we'll all freak out. Hello. Welcome to the Black Leather Eye Channel. Jason here. So how's things, Pete? I hope you're alright. Um, alright, so I just got a mixed bag of stuff I want to show. Stuff that... Uh, some of the stuff I've been li I was listening to months back, some of it pretty recently as well, you know, so, um, yeah, different genres of stuff. Uh, so, yeah, let's go. What we're listening to is uh, the Lovecraft sax head. Uh, so that's what's playing. Um, here's a couple of records that they played over the Halloween period. Halloween night, I spun this and I loved it. Uh, 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 Savage Planet uh, soundtrack. What an amazing record funky, jazzy, just an epic, epic listen, playing on this thing's amazing, it's so well composed, and um, yeah, it's superb, the movie originally came out in 73, and it's a classic, right, but I, I, I caught this movie when I was a kid on TV, didn't know what it was called back then, but it just weirded me out watching it, um, an amazing vibe, uh, but this soundtrack is absolutely amazing, so Blast it is on Halloween night, and it's, ah, oh, man, so good. Yeah, the uh, Savage Planet soundtrack, brilliant stuff. Here's a little band I want to give uh, give some love to, right? So this was a UK band. Well, I say band, right? They um, they were more like a traveling horror theatre group. Um, that's Nightmare, Children of the Night. This is the LP that came out in uh, 1985, I think. Um, so this was put together by the guy called Ron Dixon. Ron Spook Dixon and uh, it's signed here in the back here with some of the signs as well by a couple of the scantily clad ladies in the back who helped over the stage show and stuff um, but yeah this is a real fun Halloween style record it, like Screaming Lord Sutch and Alice Cooper Rocky Horror Picture Show it's got some of that monster mass rock and roll on it it's got some really good hard rock on it too like uh, Fly Angel Fly um, it's got some new wave style stuff on it Schizo Psycho Homicidal Maniac is really good. Witch Woman is really good. I came out with a single as well, so I'm going to show here in a minute. Um, what else? I Want to Be a Monster in a Movie. Who doesn't, right? Amazing track. Uh, but yeah, real fun Halloween style horror rock record. Uh, and these, these, these guys had a really brilliant um, horror, theatrical horror stage show with people getting electrocuted in electric chairs. Death by Hanging, they had a guillotine like Alice Cooper, um, they had a guy run about in a monster suit scaring the ladies in the crowd, sounds like amazing crack, they actually played here in Belfast at one point I think in the late 80s, uh, but yeah, Nightmare, Children of the Night, very 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 fun Halloween style of record, and um, they put out some singles like this, uh, I Want to Be Shot, uh, with uh, Ruth Ellis on it as well, I think it was one of the last ladies to be executed in the UK by hanging. Uh, New Orleans and Jack's Back put out that single as well. As well as this one, this is the first one I ever picked up on them. This is Witch Woman with uh, Great Balls of Fire on. Uh, yeah, Nightmare, this came out in the early 80s I think. Um, but Brent Bond, and I want to give some love to them, so there you go, Nightmare. Next one is Super Eternus. This is uh, early years stuff. This is stuff from their first demo and early demos. Um, they were formed back in uh, late eighties in Germany. I first heard these in the nineties when a friend of mine called Gavin made a, made a really good uh, compilation tape for me. Out of all my friends, he was the one that was the most prolific in making mixed tapes, and I used to love getting tapes from him. He turned me on to a lot of great bands, um, and he made me one when he was getting into real, getting heavily into gothic rock and stuff. And this band were on it, um, or this Pearl Jack were on it. And this is absolutely superb. There's a song on here called uh, The Feast of Blood, which is brilliant. Um, but Anna Varney has one of the most despondent, I'm too weak for the world, fucking voices, you know. Uh, yeah, fine, fine record. A dark wave, I suppose, neo classical sort of gear. Um, I say this is all the early stuff. So, glad to pick this up on record. Yeah, Super Returns, the early years. Oh, so, if I say to you, 
wailing, howling, screaming, banshee, a cappella, operatic madness. Who do you think of? <laughs> Diamante Glass. Diamante Glass. I mean, I was listening to these a while back. Um, some of my, some of our records, and I was in that mood. And somebody who completely divides opinion, especially in my house, as soon as my missus sees me reaching for these records, she's off like a shot. Actually, though, with this one, she didn't find too bad. This is, out of some of these I'm going to show, this is probably the, the, the easiest to get into. Um, it's not as out there, um, generally speaking, than some of the others. Although, it's still the amount of glass, so it's, it's a bit mental. Um, but yeah, this is Saint of the Pit, superb. Um, I picked this one up the other, the other week, actually, I hadn't had this one. So this is uh, The Singer. Which is her doing um, more of a piano thing, not as experimental as, as such. Still out there because it's her, right? But uh, yeah, she's got she's doing a version of Gloomy Sunday on here and stuff. And I put a spell on you and uh, Judgment Day. Where were you when uh, they crucified my Lord? Stuff like that. Um, yeah, this is really good. But I prefer her um, more out there stuff. Um, Divine Punishment. It's brilliant. I don't know how to describe these really. This is one of those artists that you have to take a deep dive into and just go for it. Um, it's like being thrown into a pit and you don't know where you are, you know. Um, yeah, she's just absolutely incredible. Uh, the Litanies of Sin. Um, this is bonkers. Because th this record, when I first bought this, I get turned on to her around about the time of the Serpenta Canta LP when it came out. Um, so what was that, 2003 or something? I read an article in a magazine about her and I was just intrigued by it. <clears throat> and I went out and picked up the record. Didn't know whether I liked it or not, you know. It took me a while for... I'm still in that way about some of her music, you know. But she's just an intriguing artist. And I picked up this and I couldn't sit through this at first. This, I was like moving the needle around trying to find some sort of um, I don't know, safety net for me to hang on to, but some sort of formula of structure or something, but this is just insane. Um, and then one day I decided to tackle it properly, sit down. I listened to this in headphones in the dark and it was an experience. Um, yeah, I don't know what else to say about it really, but um, it was, it's a pleasure to go back and listen to it. Well, a pleasure. I don't know. Um, interesting to go back and listen to her music. Um, once, if I'm in the mood for it, it's fucking fantastic. Uh, but as I said, I don't know how to describe her music. But I had this. I bought this book back in two um, thousands. The shit of God, right? The Craig Barker does a, an intro and uh, introduction piece on this, and it's just how he, he describes her music, right? So there is a purity of um, intent. An execution in her creations which lends them an intensity which leaves the listener breathless, rapturous, and perhaps a little intimidated. There are no concessions to commercialism here, no softening of the blows, no pandering. These are works made by an artist who risks, perhaps even invites, horror and repugnance in the process of making her mark on our hearts. Best way to describe it. Um, an amazing artist. Superb stuff. Next up was Morning Mist. This is Amen. So this came out in 2020 on Blood Rock Records. Italian doom metal. Um, superb record this. It's sort of like a duo, a project, you know. Um, Ancient Ruins, Isle of Loss is an amazing track. But this uh, betrayal is an art cracking track. This reminds me of, well it's got that Italian hard doom weirdness. Where some of the vocal sound are just sound like they're just thrown on with those accented voices and uh, it gives it a brilliant atmosphere. Um, I use a lot of violin in it. Some of this reminds me of Occultation, um, Bismal Grief, Paul Chain, um, Death SS musically as well. Has that, as I say, that Italian vibe. Um, and then it has like a mix of, some of it reminds me of Tiamat, Astral Sleep era, Clouds era, and some of the early 90s gothic doom death stuff. 
from the UK. There's a lot, there's a, um, a violin in this that's used pretty prominently and it's really, really good. I really enjoyed this. It's got really cool um, sort of death rocky vocals as well, really doomy. Um, yeah, some cracking riffs on it too. Really good doom metal record. Uh, uh, more than missed with Amen. Um, here's a band I don't know much about. M4 Alice. This is Shiloh. I picked this up because this cover is it just looked amazing. Um, hold on. But I don't know anything about this band really. So this came out in 88 uh, on Plastic Head Records. And it's I didn't know whether it was metal, I didn't I didn't, didn't know anything about it. Um, and this is like it's a bit of killing joke going on in here. It's got a um, it's gothic rock, post punk sound, and it goes all over the place. Uh, some of, sometimes the guy's voice reminds me of uh, the singer from the Saints. He's got something about his voice that reminds me of that. Um, it's really good. I wouldn't mind checking out some more of their stuff. I don't know if they have anything else, but um, yeah, Shadow by M4 Alice. Good goth post punk stuff. So I've been hitting uh, the Mighty Spinker again. That sounds weird, right? Uh, I'll be listening to Mighty Spinker again. Uh, I've talked about this one before. New Manson Family. What an amazing record. Songs like Drop Dead. And it's just a, it's a brand, brand LP. And shout out to Bill over at Ninth Circle. Um, he, he contacted me a while back to let me know that he was a fan of Mighty Spinker in this album as well. So, uh, it, the New Manson Family. Such a brand, brand LP. Um, good morning to do the Helpless Skelter and all of this. I've talked about this before and how much I really like it. Genuine Um uh, The Doug Clark. There. Doug Clark passed away a few years back now, I think. Um, I contacted him and bought a DVD off him that he was selling, which had all the old footage of my, Mighty Spinker. Brilliant DVD. I'll have to dig it out and show it. Um, but yeah, brilliant. The Kingdom of Heaven by Mighty Spinker as well. Incredible old pieces get Hitler painted roses on it. Uh, Kingdom of Heavy, Secret, Secret Ceremony, I Don't Live Today, When the Clocks Run Down is a great song. Yeah, Burning, Burning Death Rock. And these boys are proggy as fuck too. And here's the Ghost Walking Doll EP. Uh, Waltz Through Hell. So this has got Ron Rackett singing on the, on the A side and Doug Clark on the B side. Um, this, feeds, this has amazing tracks on it as well. Uh, if you haven't seen the video for Ghost Walking by Mighty Spinker, check it out. Um, if you're a fan of Death Rock, even Doom Metal, you probably enjoy it. Uh, yeah, so Mighty Spinker, uh, Ghost Walking, brilliant. Here's a Doom Metal one, Spiritus Mortis. Uh, what an amazing record. The God Behind the God. It's got a real Gnostic vibe to it with that spoken part in the song as well and uh, opens up my man's steel what a charger uh, amazing amazing vocal performance on this by uh, what was better better known as albert witchfinder from reverend bazaar um curved horizons brilliant death ride from this is superb it's like a uh creeping uh doom metal necrophilic vibe to it which is uh Really sinister and really, really cool. Some brilliant heavy riffs on it, and I say an amazing vocal performance by Albert Witchfinder. Yeah, Spiritus Mortis. I picked this one, this one here up. I picked up a few, um, a few weeks back. The Black Hippies. Never heard this band before. Afro rock stuff. Um, this has got some brilliant brick beats on it. Brilliant drumming and vibe and funkiness to it. Voodoo funk. Um, it got some real good. Um, organ on it, brilliant fuzz guitar on it too. Uh, I think this came out in the 70s. Um, and yeah, I'm still taking this one in and it's really, really good, really enjoying it. Makes me want to boogie and drink and uh, have a bit of fun, it's really good. Um, what else to say about this? So, yeah, I don't know anything about this band. Uh, it just looked interesting, and it was. It's got swampy production on it, which gives the, the album an edge as well, so. Yeah, really good. Black Hippies. Here's a uh, an Italian metal band, Run After Two. Strange name for a band, right? Uh, but this was produced by Paul Chain. This came out in, oh, I don't know, late 80s maybe? Uh, and 
yeah, say produced by Paul Chain and it has that, it has some of that Italian weirdness that I love. Um, obviously a sort of influence and all on this. Um, who, who Cries for the Children, Melancholy, My Name is Man is the second track, which is a three part song. <coughs> um, and it goes into some very strange places, a bits of, bits of Prague and loads of Oregon. But yeah, really, really enjoyable. This came out in Minotauro Records. I think this is, uh, <clears throat> yeah, this came out in 88, from Minotauro. As I say, it's got that Paul Chain connection there. And it's a uh, really, really enjoyable record. So that's Run After 2. That is a very strange name, but I love this album cover as well, this album Sleep. Yep. Uh, what else is next? So here's a Doom Metal one. Mourn. This came out in uh, 95. So this is Will Palmer's old and um, Doom band and got a massive whiff of like that 90s period trouble on this uh, when I was playing this my missus walked into her room and she, as soon as she heard she can't stand the sound of Cowbell and it's quite loud on this on especially that opening track and she walks straight out again she cannot do it for some reason she hates the Cowbell right but uh yeah I loved this when it came out it came out on CD I don't think it had a vinyl um, issue back then I picked this up years later, but uh, yeah, I love this. Um, this girl singing, and um, she doesn't sound that confident, but there's something about her voice, she's just really, really good. She sounds like she would suit pop singing more, and although like, Doom Metal gives her an, an open place to move with her vocals, it sounds better on stuff like um, Children of the Circle is an amazing track. Um, after all, you know, see mellower parts in some of those songs really suit her voice um, but yeah I think it's a great doom metal record what do you think of it um, and it's got that groove and cowbell as I said but uh, Children of the Circle we tried back in um, the mid 90s when this came out um, I always wanted to cover that song and uh, a few bands I was in talked about it but it never happened um, but yeah, Mourn, Will Palmer's old punk, or Doom Band, really good crack. Still really enjoy that album. Here's a classic rock cra uh, cracker. UFO, no heavy pedal. Um, so yeah, this is a great album. That's about 76 or something. Um, opens up a natural thing. What, a, what an amazing song. It's got Bella Dawn and stuff on it. Um, what else on here? All With The Action is a great song. Martian Landscape. Um, just a masterclass in in uh, heavy rock heavy rock melody um, with melody you know melodic heavy rock is what I'm trying to say uh, Shanker's on fire as usual um, Phil Moggs is an amazing uh, amazing singer uh, yeah it's a cracking cracking LP probably my favourite LP by UFO is probably uh, Force It it's probably the most listened to LP I have by UFO uh, what an amazing record this one is amazing too so yeah no Heavy Padding by UFO. Hold on, they turn this over. Next up, Tim Buckley with Lorca. Uh, when this came out, 1970, I think this came out. Um, I saw, I love that playing this record. Well, I had it in CD back in the uh, late 90s, early 2000s. It was one of my chill out LPs. And this it moves well away from a lot of the. Um, the singer-songwriter folk stuff he was doing. It still got that, but... Um, and he was moving way before this into more jazz rock territory and stuff. Um, it, this has a more experimental sound and song. Like the opening track, Laura Guy, is a real class-haunted song um, where he wheels away over the top of it. It's probably alienated a lot of his fans. Uh, but it settles down a bit you know, on the B side. Um, I had a talk with my woman's really good, drifting, and it ends in Nobody Walking. Um, which has got loads of great groove and the Congos stuff on it. It's brilliant. Uh, what else is on here? That's um, I have talked with my woman. It's a beautiful song too. Um, but yeah, I mean, uh, I can imagine hearing this and expecting back then and expecting another um, folk rock LP, but uh, yeah, uh, folk singer songwriter stuff. And he he doesn't deliver that on this. It's weirder, 
they say the opening track Lorca is fucking fantastic um, I love the way he sings that and his son was an amazing artist as well the, the apple didn't fall too far from the tree there like um, yeah who's, who's playing um, the question on this Carter C.C. Collins is playing congas on this um, absolutely amazing got a great groove it, it ends on a, a pumping note you know uh, many more I got here I'll do this one um, Soul Impressions um, Janko Nilovic um, so this is one of those library records library music records that a lot of that stuff's being released again reissued and I've seen this one and I, I picked it up probably three months back or so I wanted this one for a while so I was glad to get it um, yeah this 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 has a vibe some of this reminds me of like some of those brilliant black exploitation soundtracks um, a brilliant record to chill to absolutely amazing playing on really well composed and um, he's done a lot of stuff library music stuff that I wouldn't mind picking up um, but yeah this is a really really good good listen uh, the Detroit Cobras I'm gonna make this the last one I have a few more here but uh, I'll make this the last one because I have to go and pick the boy up from school so the Detroit Cobras Life Loving and Leaving what an amazing record uh, Brian Gary Draw uh, doing old blues and soul numbers just like stuff by like um, Otis Redden and all in here and Mary Wells um, it's absolutely an amazing record and see this girl has such a, a, an amazing sexy voice she's passed away now unfortunately I have most of her records actually I think I have them all now um, but this is absolutely fantastic LP um, say Garage Rock doing those old blues and soul um, standards so good great rock and roll record yeah Detroit Cobras um, life, love, and leaving, and I'm gonna leave you because this guy's starting to go away, and it's getting on my tits. Anyway, catch you later. Bye.